Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover looping with for and range. Now, another thing every programming language must do is to provide a way to perform the same action multiple times. Now, the keyword for is one way in which you'll be able to loop through code while executing repeatedly. So, for example, as long as you have more hamburger to eat, keep eating that hamburger. And for loops come in many forms. Now, for example, you're going to be able to loop through a list of values, and this is a preview of what lists look like. So you'll just be able to go for i in, and then you'll list a whole bunch of different values. Exactly like that. And what's going to happen is the first time you loop through this list right here, this value 2 is going to be assigned to this variable i. The next time through, this value 4 is going to be assigned to, to i, and it's going to continue looping as long as there's values in our list. Again, we are going to indent after we go and put our for loop in there to define everything, all of the code anyway, that is going to be assigned to that for loop for execution. We can save it, we can run it, and you're going to see that it prints all those values out. Alright, so cool stuff. So that's a way to loop through lists. But we're also going to be able to use the keyword range to define our lists for us. So for example, range 10 is going to create a list starting at 0 and then it will go up to but not include 10. So range 10 is going to give us the values of 0 through 9. So let's now combine that range with a for loop to print out some values. Once again, for i in range and 5. And again, we're going to be able to print out those values. Save it, run it, and you can see it prints out 0 through 4. Now we're also going to be able to define the starting as well as the ending values with range. This time we're going to print out the values of 2 through 4. Again, 2, and then 5. Save it, run it, and you'll see 2, 3, 4 prints out. Now before I ask you to solve another problem, I want to teach you how to test if a number is either odd or even. So I'm going to go i is equal to 6. Now if you divide any even number by 2, it will not have a remainder. And the modulus operator, which we covered previously, is going to provide the remainder of a division. So for example, if I would say i modulus 2 is equal to 0, in this situation you would know that 6 indeed is a even value. And I can show you this in an example, and you're going to be using this in the next problem that I gave you. Is 6 even? And all this code is available underneath this video. So we'll say i modulus 2 equal to 0. And of course it's going to provide you a value of true. Alright, so now with that information I want you to go and try to solve a problem. What I want you to do here is print out all the odd numbers from 1 to 20. And like always feel free to look at everything that we have covered in this tutorial as well as all the previous tutorials. So the solution to this problem is to go for i in range, and I want to go 1 through 20. What's that mean? Well, we got to go 1 through 21, and now I'm just going to use modulus to check that the result is not equal to 0. So I'll say if i modulus 2 is not equal to 0, well, in that situation, I can print this odd value. So I'll say print i equal to and i run it and you can see it prints out all of the odd values. Now as you may recall floats are values that have decimal places and we can convert our string input into a float. So we'll say something like your float is equal to input and enter a float. Let's go and get rid of this. Now if we wanted to convert that string into a float just put float in front of it and your float like that. Put the underscore inside of there. And now that we know this, 
indeed is afloat, what we're going to be able to use is the format with print to define the number of decimal places that are output onto the screen. So for example, we could say something like print rounded to two decimals and then follow that up with format your float but right here where we want to go and put that float value we're gonna put our curly brackets in there again but we're also going to put a colon followed by a period two and F for float and that's going to convert the float into a two decimal place value and if we run it you're gonna see that indeed is true and there you can see the end result 1.23 and why that is important and why I covered that is you're going to use that information now to solve your next problem. Now in this problem what you're going to do is calculate how much money a person will have after investing for 10 years. And we're going to be using compounding interest here. And compounding interest is the act of reinvesting each year's interest payment and then receiving interest on both the initial value as well as on interest payments. So what your program will do is have the user enter their investment amount and their expected interest and then each year their investment will increase by their investment plus their investment times the interest rate. And what you then have to do is print out their earnings after a 10 year period. So you can pause the video, use all the code previously covered in this tutorial series and give it a go and otherwise I'm going to provide you with the solution now. So what we want to do first is ask for money invested plus the interest rate. So I'm going to say money is equal to input and how much to invest and the interest rate that they expect to receive on their money. So we'll say input interest rate. After that we're going to convert the value into a float. So we'll say money is equal to float and whatever the money amount was that they entered. Again, interest rate, we're going to do the same thing uh, once again. So we'll say float and interest rate, but also we're going to need to multiply that times uh, 0.01 because if they enter 10, we're going to round that down so that it's a, uh, you know, something we can work with. And now what we can do is cycle through the 10 years using four in range from zero through nine to go and figure out how much money they have. So we're gonna say four I in range, and this doesn't have to be I, it can be X, it can be whatever you want it to be, so just so you know that. And there we are. Just a temporary value that is going to be assigned, uh, a temporary variable that's gonna be assigned a value. So we'll say money is equal to money plus money times the interest rate that we have. So after we cycle through that, we can now print out our solution. And we'll say investment after 10 years and curly brackets, colon, dot, two, F, and follow that up with format and money. Got that there jump over here let's go and run it and so let's say you invest a hundred dollars and 10 percent interest you can expect after 10 years to have two hundred and fifty nine dollars and thirty seven cents and of course you could come in here and throw a dollar sign inside of here as well or whatever you'd like and go one hundred and five and you can see what that looks like all right, so hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, don't worry about it. And now what I want to talk about is order of operations. Now, whenever a computer tries to solve a calculation, it follows certain rules. And it will, for example, multiply values next to each other before adding them, no matter what the order is. And these rules are known as the order of operations. Now, calculations will occur in this order. So you're going to have exponentiation and root extraction before multiplication and division, and then finally addition and subtraction. So to show you some examples, so this makes more sense, I'm going to say print and two plus parentheses three times four, close that off, 
and then 2 plus 3 times 4 and then we will just change our parentheses here once again this time putting them right here and once again doing exactly the same thing here close off that parentheses and then what we can do just as a final example is don't do anything at all so we'll do this and we'll do get rid of this parentheses and get rid of that parentheses save it run it and you can see right here that the 3 multiplied times the 4 is going to occur if we have this set up like that we'll get rid of this extraneous thing here because it's kind of messy and get rid of that one let's run it again and that makes a little bit more sense so you can see here in this example that the 3 is going to be multiplied times the 4 whether the parentheses are there or they are not because they get the same result so just something important to understand whenever you are working with different calculations in Python or any programming language. And that's going to be it for this video. Make sure you go and work your way through the quiz to reinforce everything you have learned. And in the next video, I'm going to cover while loops, random values, break, continue, and I'll provide more problems for you to solve so that you can actually learn how to program. Like always, please leave your questions and comments below.